Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I'm your host Jason Leppert, here with a review of the newly elongated and enhanced Star Breeze from Windstar Cruises. I had a chance to visit and document the ship when it was first cut in two, so be sure to check out the link to that video above. Let's first take a look at the ship's specifications. The Breeze offers an upscale lifestyle. The ship is now considered part of the Star Plus class of vessels. The Star Breeze was last relaunched in 2021. She weighs in at 12,995 tons, but still carries a small ship capacity of only 312 guests, resulting in an average passenger space ratio of 41.7. Private accommodations-wise, entry-level cabins begin at a sizable 277 square feet, and any designated as Star are newly built in the added midsection, with beds located closest to either portholes, an ocean view window, or balcony, and the seating area nearest the bathroom, all of which have been entirely remodeled. Elsewhere, existing ocean view to balcony suites keep their original layouts, with great storage space throughout, and remain teddy bear approved and comfortably reupholstered options for travelers who can still take advantage of their newly rebuilt bathrooms, either complete with a spacious shower or a bathtub. Meanwhile, a completely new category is the 468 square foot deluxe suite, which occupies the width of two regular suites and comes with an optional third berth, as well as separate living and dining room space even before entering the adjacent bedroom, which is also teddy bear approved. There's also a balcony to the outside. By the way, please subscribe to our channel to not miss any of our future cruise ship reviews and tours. Plus, there are convenient USB charging outlets not just on one side of the bed, but both. And there's also a full walk-in closet with a vanity desk and plenty of storage for all sorts of clothing. The bathroom is somewhat unusually accessible only through the living room, but features Windstar's double sink basins, as well as a combination of shower and bathtub. However, the shower itself is rather small. It would have been nicer as a larger version without the adjacent tub, which although luxurious, is also a bit superfluous. Another option are corner classic suites, slightly smaller overall at 400 square feet, but with their own separate living area, bedroom, and larger balcony, as well as the ship's standard remodeled bathroom. For the bigger 575 square foot forward-facing owner suites, feature a lovely curved sofa, dining table, and full veranda, as well as classically outfitted bedroom with side window views. Last but not least is the Grand Owner Suite. Maxed out, the combined suite can measure in up to 1,374 square feet, showcasing an expansive living room, dining area, balcony, master bedroom, and the largest master bath on board, with plenty of room for an ample shower as well as tub. When you're ready to book your cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations who will magically take care of all your trip planning needs at no extra cost. For your free quote, click the link here, or reach out to them at the website, phone number, or email address below. Moving on to Starbreeze activities outside of the suites illustrates the full length of the elongated, but still intimately sized ship. From the forward cabin corridors, all the way down to the Compass Rose aft lounge. Great for socializing and enjoying live music in the evening as well as grabbing a cocktail and hors d'oeuvres. Now that the former casino has been removed, there is even more seating to go around. And just on the other side, the Star Boutique has been relocated to the starboard side of the ship. The venue occupies the previous library, as well as space freed up from the removal of a pair of old small lifeboats. Fear not though, because their life-saving capacity has been consolidated into new larger lifeboats farther ahead of the nice selection of logo items, jewelry, watches, sunglasses, and more. At the core of Starbreeze is still the ship's iconic atrium, destination services, and reception desks, crewed by Windstar's ever-friendly and attentive staff, and cool double helix spiral staircase. And all the way forward is one of the ship's whirlpools, uniquely nestled in the bow. Behind which is a set of stairs that head up to Deck 7, where guests can casually stroll the promenade deck, or visit the navigation bridge. On Windstar, passengers can enjoy an open bridge policy, unlike most other cruise ships. It is only periodically closed at the officer's discretion, usually when maneuvering in and out of port. Also greatly expanded when a total of 84 midship feet were added, 
was the ship's overall spa, salon, and fitness center with state-of-the-art exercise equipment. In fact, wave hello to Windstar President Christopher Prelog on the treadmill before we visit the new motion studio on board. Part of the World Spa by Windstar includes a brand new salon space, as well as experiential shower, dry sauna, steam room, and tiled recliners. Naturally improved also were individual treatment rooms complete with showers, ideal for body treatments such as heavenly hot stone massages. But the architectural cherry on top are the beautifully redone pool and sun decks. Replacing the once unattractive basin is a new terrace translucent infinity pool, waterfall feature, and additional whirlpool, all conveniently accessible from both levels above and below. There is also much more room for added lounge chairs for sunbathing. For other aquatic activities, the water sports platform arena still features the means to go kayak, swimming, or even take a skiff ride conveniently from the ship's stern. But still my single favorite public room on board is the Yacht Club Cafe and Library. As a traditional observation lounge with scenic wraparound views, it cannot be beat. Particularly when it also serves tasty treats throughout the day. Speaking of dining, Windstar's food, in partnership with the James Beard Foundation, has always been superb. But somehow it has been elevated yet again. The Veranda Buffet for breakfast and lunch still converts over to the Candle Steakhouse for dinner. But the shared space has been enlarged as well. Besides the existing outdoor terrace, and additional serving space inside, new auxiliary interior space, including an extra coffee bar, and side wings have also expanded into the volume once occupied by the aforementioned lifeboats, all in service to great food such as these dishes. Remarkably, all this excellent food, and even upcoming specialty cuisine, is entirely included in the cost of the cruise. The only two things that are nominally priced for more are a pair of premium Lynn's Heritage Angus steak options, like this massive 40-ounce ribeye tomahawk. But everything else, like the Amphora main restaurant, is included. Only the freshly added wine wall here and other cocktails and specialty drinks are extra, if not pre-purchased in a package. So go ahead and freely enjoy the likes of these delicious courses. And definitely reserve a spot at the all new Quadro 44 by Anthony Sasso Spanish tapas style restaurant, residing where the former retail store once was. I would recommend being adventurous here and ordering exotic plates. After all, the octopus, which I would normally shy away from, was one of my favorites of the entire cruise. Then there's the original Star Bar and new Star Grill by Stephen Rachelin across the way now. The watering hole blends up a mean Bailey's Banana Colada, but when you're done with that, the onboard barbecue is exceptional. Literally everything I tried here I absolutely loved. All I can say is bravo to each and every one of these. And remarkably, all of that is even before discussing Windstar's signature deck experience with lobster and shrimp on the barbie, as well as a whole spread of good eats. Not to mention the excellent house band performing live. Admittedly, entertainment on Starbreeze is a mixed bag. 
Said house band is great. Especially to dance to. But the Sail Away interpretive dance display, although an admirable try, is a bit corny in practice. With no library of DVDs on board anymore, in-room televisions display a good variety of on-demand films and other programming, all of which are free. Otherwise, the screening room is still available. And the compass rose from before, is where you'll find a great vocal and piano duo. Then, the simply titled lounge is where informative cooking demonstrations may be hosted. For those interested in bringing home some of that Windstar cuisine skill, or Sir Elton John may make a surrogate appearance. When the live duo and band vocalists spill over to main shows, the entertainment is noteworthy. However, when the cruise director takes over, performances honestly start to suffer. He's just okay, with his serviceable Elvis impression at least making up for some previous shortcomings. In summary, the only things we can really fault on board are said lackluster production shows, the surprisingly small showers found in the ship's new deluxe suites, and although not illustrated in detailed video, there were too many rough details to come out of the shipyard, from sloppy painting to rushed finish cabinetry, for such a refurbished ship. But overall, the Starbreeze knocks it out of the park and can certainly take a bow for the excellent newly added specialty dining options, plus the beautifully expanded spa and pool and sun decks, especially while doing a superb job of retaining classic small ship details like a prized observation lounge. Thanks so much for watching! If you would, as it really does a lot to help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.